it. And we need to bring Hold on, it. let's talk about let's talk about Martin for a second. Huh? Let's talk about more. No, no, let's talk about Martin for a second, because that's a good point. I would encourage everyone to go back and listen to the entirety of the I Have a Dream speech. Not yeah. just the part that they play on his birthday, not just the part that they play in February. Listen to the entirety of the speech. The entirety of the speech is a respira is a sorry, talking too fast. Rep reparations cry from Mark. He yeah, says the that the dream part was just an was almost an afterthought. It Not was it was afterthought, good. but that wasn't the, the dream part wasn't the focus, but that was the this, the, the, that, the that was warm, fuzzy part that they put, put that, out. That was white folks hijacking Martin's legacy making him seem like he was more docile than what he actually was and then ultimately giving that to us as a pacifier anytime we get out of control the one thing i want to tell about white why i want to tell white folks is stop bringing up martin in these situations y'all killed him too so it, <laughs> it, it ain't that ain't you nothing didn't, you, know you mean? didn't like him when he was alive you were yeah, doing yeah. the so, same wiretaps and all these other things that they were doing to malcolm they were doing to him as well as the others within the movement um but like I said, that's the part I, you said, you know, read or listen to the entire I Have a Dream speech. The same goes for the letter from, uh, was the letter from the Birmingham jail. Um, the last speech that he gave, which when it, when it shifted to, you know, he was talking about workers' rights and the, the Poor People's Campaign, things of that nature, like. Which is why they really took him out. Yeah, because he, it was like, oh, wait a minute. He has the ear of the people. They're already following him. And we're cool if y'all want to keep coming out here and doing your civil disobedience and getting in good trouble, as John Lewis calls it. Um, and y'all can keep doing these protests because that's fine, because we're, we're still getting to hurt you. That's fine. But hold up. You're now talking to them. And, and they saw, hold up. What Malcolm is saying and what Martin are saying are starting to line up in the public, not just behind closed doors. And it's, oh, wait a minute. If he starts telling them about this, like to demand equality, economic equality, oh, they're going to realize that. And then they're going to galvanize around that. And then we're really going to have a problem. Oh, so you know what? Let's nip that in the bud. We'll take him out. And then because... I love the emotion that we have and that we are such a forgiving people. But that, that literally, like, that was like a cut the legs out from under us because at that point, Ma Malcolm X had already been killed. Wait. He was already dead. Yeah. So Malcolm X had already been killed. There were others who had been killed that, you know, don't get as, they don't get talked about as much. But, and then you had Malcolm, and then they killed Martin. And it's just like, everyone understandably was, like, the wind knocked out of them. And it just, okay, hold up. We're going to try to get a few things done in the wake of it. But to the, me, it was, just, they, it was a, the similar effect of what happened after they bombed Tulsa. Um, and even, this is something else we talked about, I just before I forget, even when we had communities that were thriving, Black communities that were thriving, and I'm thinking about Durham, and as much as I enjoy the convenience of the Durham Freeway, like they ran that highway literally right through the black community. And